Hi, this is Apostle Laura Lee. I'm going to show you that Paul is a satanic narcissist gaslighting women. Paul is not a Christian. These are sick epistles written by literal Satanists. You're dealing with satanic narcissism here. And how people can think this is spiritual, uh, it's, the, it's that narcissist spirit of Satan blinding people um, that they can't see it. Now, we, uh, we do come from a position as born-again saints that they've handed us this Bible full of false Gnostic epistles and said, this is the inspired, infallible word of God. So they started out brainwashing us with that lie, and so then we don't question. Well, I always saw Paul. Um, I did have a problem where I did not question the Gospel of Matthew. Somehow I missed that, but 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 I got to it. Matthew is it's just Gnostic. Let's look at this real quick. I'm going to take you through this. I'm going to show you that this is inherent gaslighting of women. The exaltation of man, of men, in relation to women is the gaslighting of women because you're declaring that there's something wrong with women. Women are deficient. Women are um, not, not included. They're excluded. And women are evil in this theology. And a narcissist is going to justify his narcissist abuse by blaming the victim. And that's what all that Paul does. All Paul does is defame women, put down women, and gaslight women, and define women as the problem and evil. That women must be suppressed, dominated, and controlled because women are evil. Now that is the mind of the narcissist who does the narcissist abuse. They don't have a conscience for the evil of the abuse of a woman. A narcissist has no conscience for the abuse of a woman in a narcissist relationship because the narcissist has defined the woman as the problem and the evil. And he has defined himself as all good. She is all evil. He is all good. That is the doctrine that Paul teaches. Women are all evil. Men are all good. Now let's look at this. And women, therefore, because they are all evil, women don't count. Women are zero. That is what narcissism is about. Um, Paul is a satanic narcissist. I'm going to give you a definition of gaslighting in a moment. First, I'm going to read this quickly and show it to you. This is all satanic narcissism. <clears throat> because of how it treat how it exalts men and diminishes women and gaslights women, defames women, demeans women, degrades women, defines women as evil and the problem. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and givings of thanks be made for whom? All men. Now, that's that doesn't mean men and women. That means men. Pray for men. Women are nothing. Women are being degraded, demeaned, defamed, and held as all evil by saying that you pray for all men. For kings, you see, his first thing is all about the world. Now, when they say for kings, he's, he's wanting you to pray for the pope. He's trying to make you Roman, Roman Catholic. Pray for Caesar. Pray for the pope. Be Roman. And for all that are in authority. So pray for Caesar. Um, <clears throat> pray, for, pray for the pope. And, and, and come under the authority of the pope. That's what he's preaching. He wants you to be authority-minded. And he's defaming women and making all about men. And then he's giving you a false promise. Now, I want you to go to, when you have time, I can't do a long tape, so go to Second um, Chronicles 7.14. We are not to pray for kings and all that are in quote-unquote authority. These are the devil's offices. We're not to pray for the devil's offices. This is the world system. That's, that's not what we're to be about as followers of Jesus Christ. Second Chronicles 7.14, it says, If my people, who are called by my name, so, and Jesus in John 17 prayed only for the, for the saints, not for the world. And so Paul, because he's a satanic narcissist trying to pull you into Satanism, wants you to pray for the world. He wants you to pray for world leaders and world system government and see them as your authority because then you're being pulled into the world system where Jesus said, no, no, pray for the saints. You're in the world. You're not of it. 
um, Paul is, is making you worldly. Right there, worldly. And then he's giving you a false promise that if you're worldly and you give thanks for the Pope and pray for the Pope and all like him, that, oh, you're going to get a promise. It's a Roman promise. It's a lie. That we may lead a quiet life in all godliness and honesty. Um, talk to the, the, the saints who suffered through the Inquisition. You don't pray for the Pope. You bind Satan. You pray against the Pope as a, as a Protestant. You don't pray for him. No, you pray for the saints and you pray to bind the enemies. You bind Satan and you pray against the wicked. Not for the wicked, against the wicked. To diminish their power. This increases the power of the wicked over the just. That's all Paul's about. He's a Satanist. <clears throat> and he's lying to you. That you're, and he says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. No, it is not. If that was good and acceptable in John 17, Jesus would have been praying for Caesar. Did Jesus pray in Caesar, in, in John 17, for Caesar? No. Jesus prayed for those who believe in him. We are to be one as the saints, not to be one with the world. This makes you one with the world. It's satanic. And then he says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Now that is not a slip up. That does not mean all men and women. It means men only. So his God and Savior, who is Lucifer, wants only, in that doctrine, only men are saved. Women are nothing. Because it's a narcissist abuse theology. The beast system is a narcissist abuse system. So it's all about all men being saved. And because Satan is a narcissist and Paul is a satanic narcissist, he's wanting this understanding that men are saved, women are evil. Women can't be saved. Women, women are evil. They can't have the same salvation as men. And I'm going to show you that. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Well, he's not, he's speaking lies. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Now, right there, he's denying the deity of Jesus Christ and he's making Jesus just another Christ. The man, Christ Jesus. Paul says he is Christ in 2 Chronicles 2.10. So he's got a Christ consciousness where all are Christ. That's Paul. He's a Satanist. He's a Satanist narcissist. Look at this. Who gave himself for a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. Well, you know what? We're all apostles. We're all ordained. Go back to John 15. Jesus has called us all friend. He's ordained us all. We are all to preach and we are all sent. So we're all apostles. So here Paul is exalting himself. Yes, I am an apostle. I'm apostle Laura Lee. If you're born again, you're an apostle too because you were sent. You were sent and Jesus says so in the book of John, John 17. He has sent us even as the father sent him. So we are all apostles. But what Paul is saying here is he's saying I'm because he's saying the apostle. This is all Roman. It's all evil and satanic. I speak the truth in Christ. No, he's lying. And lie not. See, he says, oh, I'm not lying. No, you are lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. You know, he, he's just puffing himself up as he preaches doctrines of demons. Here we go. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, because his doctrine is that only men, only men are saved, because men are the heads, and men have a different salvation than women. <clears throat> now, here he without wrath or doubting. Now, here is the opposite he says about women. Now, look at this. In like manner also that women, now he's going to tell women how to dress. He already said that women need to wear head coverings, which is an emblem of shame. Co you know, think about it, covering your face. Like if you're really ashamed, you cover your face. Well, if you're really ashamed, you cover your whole head. And he demanded head coverings from women because he's demanding that women come under abuse. Demanding that women be ashamed. The first thing that an abuser wants to do is whittle down your sense of esteem for yourself. He wants to assault that so you will accept abuse. That's what Paul preaches is the abuse of women. So he wanted women under head coverings to be ashamed. And 
and to not have any sense that they could have personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what the head covering means. He said it showed that the women were under submission to men. It's women confessing, I don't have the same salvation as men. Um, I, I am abused by men, and that is my role. And that's what Paul teaches, the abuse of women, narcissist abuse. <clears throat> so he wants to tell women how to dress, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Because he's going to go a little bit further and he's going to call women whores. Now, a narcissist is going to attack how you dress. And he's going to say that because of how you dress, you know, if you don't dress, you know, modestly, he's going to call you a whore. Well, Paul calls women whores in 1 Timothy 5, saying they're wanton against Christ. So he defines women as whores. And you've got to understand that when he's telling women how to dress, this is a, nar a satanic narcissist abuser demanding that you dress modestly. And right there it says, with shamefacedness. That's exactly what a narcissist wants out of you. <clears throat> he wants you to be downcast and to be ashamed because then you're going to um, consent to narcissist abuse. If you're beat down enough and you think that I deserve to be abused then you're going to accept abuse. And that's what he's teaching women. It is inherently abusive for a man to tell a woman how to dress. You're treating her like an object and a thing. You dominate and control. You're not even giving her um, the authority over her own body to dress her own body. You're dressing a woman. She is your narcissist abuse victim at that point. When you tell a woman how to dress, you're not letting her be a person and express herself through her clothes. Now, you might not approve of her clothes, but that's your problem. You know, because if, if a woman is walking around in a thong and if she's walking around in a bikini top, you know what? That's her business. That's her business. That's her responsibility. That's her decision. That's her choice. And how you react to that is your responsibility. But when you shift the responsibility for your own reaction to how a woman dresses, you're shifting the blame to her and you're making her the scapegoat of your own sin. If you don't have control of your heart, you know, if a woman walked naked in front of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ would not lust after her because his heart was right before God. And so, but when you make it about, well, how a woman dresses determines a man's reaction to her, you have shifted responsibility of your, from yourself to her, and you've scapegoated her for your own sin. You're responsible, men, for your own sin. <clears throat> I don't care what she's wearing. I don't care if she's naked. You're responsible for your own sin. I don't care if um, women started walking around naked. You're responsible for your own sin. If there's something evil in your heart, you're responsible. Adam, I'm not, I'm not into a nudist colony. I'm not saying that. I, I'm not preaching that women should walk around naked. But I'm saying if they do that, that's their responsibility before God. That's not your business. That's their business. That's between them and God. And how you react to that shows what's in your heart. You can't say, well, it's her fault. No, it's your fault. Men have to be responsible for their own sin. Period. No blame shifting. Um, in like manner that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. See, women, according to Paul, don't have holy hands. Women are unholy, so they have us modestly with shamefacedness. Women don't, men don't have anything to be ashamed of. Women have only shame. See, he's an abuser. He's a narcissist. And sobriety, not with broided hair. Now he's telling them that, you know, women, you can't have any self-esteem. You can't make yourself look good or gold or pearls or costly array. He wants women in rags and in dark clothes, in head coverings. This is very, very um, abusive but which becometh women professing godliness. See, he's kind of got to dig in there like, okay, so you say you're godly? You say you're godly? But he's denying that you are. He's saying that you're evil, 
corrupt, and sinful. He's got a very negative vision of women, and he wants you to accept that negative vision, just like any abuser wants you to accept a negative vision so they take the blame, are taking the blame for the abuse that is being heaped on you by the abuser. And that's what Paul is preaching and teaching because he's a satanic narcissist straight from hell. That's all Paul is, is a satanic narcissist straight from hell. This is not a born-again Christian. This is a this is this is a wicked man here. This is this is the epitome of evil speaking. This is a voice from the pits of hell speaking. But but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So women can only do good works. They can't be saved like men. Women have to be ashamed, embarrassed, accept abuse, let men tell them how to dress and be like, yes, master, as slaves. He wants women enslaved by men, and he wants men to be exalted and accept the role of narcissists who abuse women. He said, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. You see, he's a gaslighter. He is a gaslighter who is saying, abuse women and women take abuse. Subject yourself to this abuse. Because right here, this is abusive. To tell women how to dress, to be shamefaced, um, to not do their hair, to not wear jewelry, to not have nice clothing. This man is a dominating, controlling abuser. If you were married to a man like this, you would need to get out of that house to get away from your abuser. And here Paul is a satanic narcissist abuser teaching all men to abuse women. And then he wants the woman to be silent and take it. He wants the woman to take the abuse. He wants her brainwashed into taking abuse. This man is a devil from hell. For anyone to preach this man, they're preaching straight from the pits of hell. He says, but I suffer not a woman to teach. So a woman is to be silent and subject and not teach. A woman is not to have anything to say. A woman has no boundary lines around her. A woman has no equality with a man. She's a slave. She's a thing. She's an object. She is an abuse victim to Paul. Paul hates her. Paul hates her and he wants her to take the abuse. And he says, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For her to even open her mouth as she's being beaten by this man, as he's telling her what to wear, as he's telling her she needs to be ashamed of herself, as he's heaping on her all of this abuse, all of this domination and control. If she stands up for herself, he's saying, you have no authority to stand up for yourself. You have no authority to speak. You have no authority whatsoever, you abuse victim woman who I hate. That's Paul talking. That's the reality of the spirit of Satan speaking through this demoniac. And But to be in silence. So she is just to suck it up and take all the abuse and live her life as an abuse victim because Paul says so. For the Adam was first formed, then Eve. So he's making the case, well, you're a nothing. You're a zero. A man is everything. A man is to be exalted. A woman is to be degraded and demeaned and abused. And she is to accept the abuse. She is to see herself in a one-down position. She is to be an abuse victim. She is to take all the gaslighting I'm heaping out on her as I call all women evil just for being women. Paul is declaring it a crime to be a woman, that you are in a criminal state for being a woman, and there is no salvation for you. Men are saved. Um, he says his God wills that all men be saved, but women, you have no hope, is what Paul is saying. You need to accept the role of narcissist supply and, a, and an abuse victim in a narcissistic relationship of abuse, as Paul preaches narcissist abuse theology, because this man is a devil from hell. This is a devil talking. If you can't discern this is a demon, well then you need to get on your face before God and get to know the real Jesus Christ because this is a demon talking here. And Adam was not deceived. So now he's lying and saying that Adam sinned but was not deceived. He's, he's denying. He's making Adam the righteous, Eve the scapegoat. Now, when you sin, you have been deceived. 
And you have believed a lie because you have believed the devil and the devil is a lie. So if you believe the devil and you sin, which is what Adam and Eve did, they believed the devil and they sinned, you have been deceived by the devil who is a liar. You cannot sin without being deceived by a liar. Because if you were walking in the truth, if Adam was not deceived, he would have walked in the truth. And God himself turned to Adam and said, the ground is cursed for your sake, for what Adam did. Adam was deceived. Adam sinned. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So he is making the case that, and it's a false case, that Eve was the scapegoat for Adam's sin. And now all women must be abused. All women have to accept an, a one-down position in relation to men. All women need to be ashamed. All women need to accept abuse, narcissist abuse. This is gaslighting. The woman being deceived was in the transgression. That is a demoniac gaslighting women. That is gaslighting right there. That's like, were you? did you read the Bible? Did you see that Adam committed the same sin? Gaslighting is when a man denies what he has done and blames the woman and makes up a completely different story than what happened. That's just what Paul did right there. He's gaslighting women, and he is moving to declare to women, women, you are evil, you are criminal, all of you as a group are evil and criminal. See, there's no discussion of the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no discussion of salvation for women. No discussion of being cleansed from all sin for women. No discussion of being justified. No discussion of being made right with God. No, women are one down and ashamed and in sin and in transgression. Criminals. Evil. That's what Paul says. That's what a narcissist believes of women. In a relationship, that's what, how Paul, that's his theology of narcissist abuse, and that is what he is teaching men and women. He's teaching men to abuse women. He's teaching men, men, you can be narcissists because women, I'm beating them down. I'm criminalizing them for being women. I'm declaring all women evil, so you can be a narcissist and have no conscience about it. Abuse them. Use them. Treat them terribly. Because you can, because I have defamed them all. I have stripped from them the power of salvation. So you can be as a God ruling over a woman in satanic power of the devil himself as a narcissist like me. Because Paul is a narcissist extraordinaire straight from hell. He's of the devil himself. You people need to repent and make a change and, and, and ask God to cleanse you of this filthy doctrines of demons this man spews from the bowels of hell. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved. See, a woman, uh, a woman might possibly be saved in the future. She shall be saved. A woman is not saved, but a woman shall be saved. Here, here he wills for all men to be saved, but women don't have the same hope because they don't have the possibility of salvation like men do because women are criminals. All women are criminals. Eve was a criminal. Adam was righteous. Eve was the criminal. He, he scapegoated Eve. And he scapegoated all women, just as any narcissist will do. If, if, as she is a conditional salvation, she shall be saved if she continues in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So she's only going to be saved by good works. She doesn't have any cleansing. She doesn't have any grace. She has to earn her salvation, and she has to earn her salvation by accepting narcissist abuse. This man is straight from hell. Let's move to gaslighting. A sneaky... Gaslighting, a sneaky kind of emotional abuse. Let's go over the abuse of Paul and everyone who follows Paul. Everyone who believes Paul, women who believe Paul, you have accepted emotional abuse. You have received a narcissist as your spiritual leader. You are in a cult. You have a cult frame of mind if you receive Paul. You need to be delivered. You need to see him for what he is and come out of the cult of Paul. He's of the devil. He's a Satanist. 
Gaslighting, a sneaky kind of emotional abuse. Gaslighting is one of the most difficult types of emotional abuse to recognize. Most kinds of emotional abuse are easy to spot if you can look at the situation rationally rather than emotionally. Don't buy into the smear campaign of the gaslighter. He's smearing women. He's smearing Eve. He's demanding that women, he's smeared Eve, he's scapegoated Eve, and he's demanding that women accept the image of a smeared, scapegoated, abuse victim. He wants you shamefaced. He wants you to receive the identity of an abuse victim. He's of the devil. He's of the devil. Why should I have anything good to say about this Satanist? I don't. He's a demoniac. He needs to be repudiated and rejected. <clears throat> Someone puts you down constantly, criticizes every move you make, shames you, blames you, calls you names, refuses to show affection until they get what they want, punishes you, or keeps you away from friends and all in an attempt to to control you. These are more obvious forms of emotional abuse. Paul did every single last one of them. He shamed, he blamed, he put down. He did everything there. He criticized every move a woman makes. Every move. Every move. She's to be shamefaced. She's fully criminalized. She's to be in silence. She's to be dominated and controlled. She can't speak even for herself. She's not allowed to have a voice. And if she speaks up, he's usurping. Paul says that's usurping the authority that a man has over her. He's giving a man 100% domination and control over a woman. And he's saying, woman, you got zero. You're a nothing. You're a nothing. If you speak, you're a super. Uh, you're you're usurping a man's authority over you because a man has full authority over you because you are a nothing. You are an abuse victim. You are evil, woman. You are Eve was in the transgression. Adam was spotless and righteous and holy, and you're just like Eve. You're evil, woman. All women are evil, and your only hope is to do good works. You better you better work in the coal mine, woman. You better accept abuse. You better be dominated and controlled. You better let a man tell you what to wear, call you names. You better not have any self-esteem whatsoever. You better not at all. You better look down. You better not, you know, walk tall. You better you better have your face down to the ground, shamefacedness, accepting the abuse. Silence with all subjection. You better take the abuse, woman. That's what he said. Read this, everything. I'll put the link below. Gaslighting is different, though. Instead of abusing you in obvious ways, the gaslighter controls you by manipulating, hiding, and distorting the facts of your situation. What are the facts of the situation, women? Did Adam sin? Was Adam deceived equally with Eve? Yes. Women, are you responsible for the sin of Eve? And are you a criminal just because you're a woman? Because Paul says you're a criminal just because you're a woman. Paul denies all of salvation for you. Paul is the accuser of the brethren. Paul is the accuser of women. Paul is the abuser of women. Paul is the dominator and controller of women. He wants you to accept a negative vision of yourself as evil, and he wants you to be ashamed of sin. He wants to put a big, big sack and a bag and a pack of luggage on your back and have you carry it and look down at your feet and say, yes, I will receive abuse because I am a woman and I am a criminal. Eve was a criminal and I am a criminal and men are righteous and I am, all women are criminals. So we're going to, our job is to accept abuse. And if we take abuse real good, if we take the abuse, then maybe one day we'll be saved by taking abuse. That's what he's saying. You need to take abuse. And if you, if you take enough abuse, possibly you might be saved. But if you don't take abuse, you're wanton against Christ. You're a whore if you don't take Paul's abuse. That's what he says in 1 Timothy 5. Go to 1 Timothy 5. He says that women who won't buy into this are whores against Jesus Christ and they have no salvation. Because your only salvation is taking abuse, women. What do you think of his doctrine? That your only salvation, women, is taking his abuse. I say you better throw the bum out. He's a, he's a dominator from hell. <clears throat> he's distorted all facts. He's, he's defined you as evil. He's defined you as criminal. 
and he wants full, total, and complete control of you. He wants you to be utterly silenced. He wants you to declare that a man has 100% authority over you, and you have nothing, woman. You are a criminal. You are a nothing. You are a zero. And and you better do good works. And your good works are to, are to admit that you're just evil. You're a criminal. And men are going to rule over you and dominate you. And they're going to be your narcissist abusers. And you're going to accept the abuse, women. That's all he preaches. That's all Paul preaches. He's a devil straight from hell. Being gaslighted is especially hard to deal with simply because it's such a sneaky form of abuse. He's gaslighting you, women. He's gaslighting you, telling you about this, about Eve. This is a Satanist. The person who gaslights you wants to control you, just like with other types of abuse. They just don't want you or anyone else to know they're doing it. So Paul says, hey, it's sound doctrine that Adam wasn't deceived. So then, if you buy into this level false doctrine that just read Genesis, he obviously was deceived, he obviously sinned, he obviously was in the transgression. But if you sit there and you accept this as scripture, if you, if you believe that Paul is really an apostle, then you've set up your whole life to be an abuse victim, Christian women. Are you going to be an abuse victim all your life, or are you going to spit on this book and throw it in the trash? I call you to spit on this book, throw it in the trash. It's from a narcissist abuser straight from hell. And his name, they say, is Paul. But really, he's just Saul. Really, he's just the devil. If you want me to like this man, why would I like a Satanist? I'm a Christian. I despise Paul. God bless you.